If you're going to do a clean install of Windows Server 2008, the easiest way to start this is to boot off the DVD ROM that contains the version of Windows Server 2008 you wish to install. Once you get it booted, which may require to adjust the BIOS on your system or to interact with the system a little bit during the boot up process to specify that you want to boot from the CD-ROM and also to press a key during the boot up process if you already have an OS present on that system. Anyway, whichever way gets you to the point where you're able to boot off the DVD-ROM, you'll then get to the install Windows screen. Now for those of you who are used to Windows XP or Windows 2003, the first difference you're going to see is there is no text mode. You know, that solid blue screen with just text characters. What we've got here is we have a full graphical installer for Windows Server 2008 from the start. Now, what do we do with it? Well, once we get up to this screen, we've got an option here for what language we want to install. And that'll vary based on the uh, media you have. We've also got time and currency formats. And so if you're working with, uh, you know, pounds instead of dollars, so you're elsewhere in the world, or you're working with euros or other uh, currencies, you can choose how the time and the currency format are going to be handled. And you can also adjust your keyboard or input methods. So if you're utilizing a, uh, another keyboard format besides just the U.S. keyboard. Now, there's not many other options on this screen to work with, so we're just going to click Next. And on this next screen, we actually have three options. We can do an installation now, which will ask us a couple more questions. We've got what to know before installing Windows, which will handle a couple of uh, you know, ans question answers, sort of a uh, frequently asked question list. And then a repair your computer, which will take us into a repair uh, utility that will help us troubleshoot an already installed server that perhaps is having problems with its boot up. That's not going to solve the problem with any specific program you might be running, but that is going to help you solve boot up problems where the operating system is basically dead, at which point maybe the repair com your computer because you're booting from the operating system on the CD-ROM instead of the host OS might be able to help you repair things. No guarantees on that, but up here at the uh, website you'll be able to find some videos on that later in the course. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose the install now. And couple, give it a couple minutes, and Windows will bring up the menu to enter your product key. Now, here it's asking us for the product key, and depending on the type of installation you're using, you may have a retail key, which came in the shrink wrap uh, box with your software. It might be a key that you have to access through Microsoft's licensing website. So you, maybe you've purchased it as part of a volume license agreement or there may be other ways that you've obtained the key. Now, you're act actually not required to enter a key during the installation. And this is really useful because for a lot of administrators, they may not want to they may want to make sure the server's up and running because Microsoft is tracking more and more the number of times specific keys are used for uh, installing the OS. For example, if I buy a one license copy to Windows Server 2008, I'm probably allowed to activate that just two times. Once for the operating system, perhaps one for the virtual uh, instance. Anything beyond that, I may be in violation of my license agreement. But what if I want to install it, see how things work, and maybe I want to basically go back and repeat the installation so that I can uh, do it for real this time. So maybe, you know, it's sort of a practice run. Well, in that case, Microsoft allows us to do the installation without entering the key. I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second. Now, the other reason you might do this is more and more companies are really keeping track of their product keys because they don't want to be accused of software piracy or things like that. So rather than give technicians who may be doing the installation of the server product keys that they have to enter in, you know, those 25 character uh, keys are just can be a bit of a nightmare to put in there. Instead, a senior uh, technical staff person can go around later and put in the keys necessary to activate it. Or in a large enterprise, we actually can even take advantage of what's called a KMS or a key management server where our servers will automatically go and get their key by doing a network discovery and finding the key management server. That way we're never having to even enter in product keys except to do that initial activation of the uh, key management server. Okay. Well, if you're not going to enter a product key at this time, you'll want to clear this checkbox to automatically activate Windows when I'm online because we can run for up to 60 days without entering in the product key. And 
when we do enter it, we can uh, activate it at that point. So this way, this will stop your server from constantly trying to go and activate the uh, server. All right, if you're interested in more about activation, there is a link or a uh, yeah, link here that talks about what is activation, and there's also Microsoft's privacy statement. The activation, they kind of say, hey, we're not going to track down who you are based on your activation. But it does give them a mechanism that if specific keys get out there in the wild, you know, are being sold on the streets uh, or, you know, sold in the pirate rings on eBay and other locations, then what, you could, what they can do is they can block those specific keys from being able to get critical updates to the operating system and basically, you know, kind of stop the, the pirate copies from being out there. So by leaving the product key blank and clearing that checkbox, we can click Next. And it'll tell us, do you want to enter a product key now? If we click yes, it'll take us right back here because we said yes, we want to enter a product key. But if we click next and we say no, it says if you choose not to enter a product key, you might need to reinstall later, potentially losing information if you need to purchase another edition. Because when I click no, it's going to read the catalog from this uh, DVD to determine what versions are available for installation at this time. So we'll give it just a second here. You can actually see it working down here. We get a little bar that's kind of working its way across. And this kind of tells you where you are with setup. So if at any time you know you think, oh, is it actually doing anything? Just go down there and take a look at that green bar. Now this media is a typical Windows install media that's got 32-bit and 64-bit versions on it. So we see over here the 32-bit, the x86, and the 64-bit installation editions. And it has standard enterprise and data center editions of the software. And so what we need to do is select the one that we purchased and want to actually run on the network. Now, this is one area where I like not being able to enter the serial number because most of my customers, I've done a good enough survey and I can determine they probably can run Windows Server 2008 Standard Edition X64 because I'd like to be able to them to utilize more than four gigs of RAM. I'd like them to be able to have you know the full capabilities of the operating system in a 64-bit platform. But every now and again, once I get the server up and running and I'm testing stuff, we'll come across one little program they forgot to tell me about that won't run on the server in the 64-bit, and we may have to go back and utilize a 32-bit OS. So by not activating right away, we've got the benefit of you know being able to wipe the machine and starting again with our 32-bit OS. But let's go ahead and go for a 64-bit installation of Windows Server 2008 Standard, full edition. We're not going to do server core installations this time. That's a rather specialized installation of Windows Server where you don't get an Explorer interface. So you don't get the Start button and all those sort of things. It's meant to be a really trimmed down version for doing things like hosting a Hyper-V virtual machines. So we're going to go with our Windows Server 2008 standard. I'm going to select the option that says I have selected the edition of Windows that I purchased because if we don't enter a valid key for Windows Server 2008 standard, we're going to have to reinstall later. You know, if we choose Enterprise and end up just buying standard, you're going to have to wipe that machine and go back. If you happen to install standard and later buy Enterprise Edition, well, you could do an upgrade at that point, and you might not lose all your data. But downgrades are a really tough thing. So let's go with a Windows Server 2008 standard full installation. That's the version I've bought, and we'll click Next. Now here we agree to the licensing terms after reviewing. There's a lot of information in there. And we're going to accept the license. We're going to click Next. And you'll see that we have two options here. We have the option to upgrade or the option to custom install. But the option to upgrade is not available. That's because we booted off the CD-ROM to do the installation. It assumes that we want to do a clean, fresh installation of Windows Server. The only time the upgrade option is actually available is if you start the installation when you're already in, inside the existing operating system. So let's say you have a Windows 2003 server and you pop the DVD in for 2008, then you'll be given the option to do an upgrade. I'm not a big fan of upgrades and I don't I can't really recommend that you perform upgrade installations on Windows 2003 to 2008. I prefer 
that organizations, and this is what I recommend all my customers and everybody I work with, is that we perform clean installations of the new OS. You know, we, in fact, the ideally, we'll keep the current server running, we'll get some new hardware, we'll install our Windows 2008 on the new hardware, and then that way we can move the applications and the data and all that while the old server is still running Windows 2003. Once I get everything up and running on the new server, I can then uh, retask the old server, you know, once we make sure that everything's working right for the user. So, don't really have much of an option here, so we're going to choose custom. Okay, it's come up and found my hard drive, which is a 72 gig drive, and it's seeing it as unallocated space. Now, depending on your disk configuration and things like that, you may have more or less options here. You may see, you know, smaller disks. If you don't see any disks at all, you might have to load a driver, which right down here, there's an option to load the driver. And those of you used to Windows XP or 2003, this was the old uh, press F6 during the setup to say you want to provide a driver from a disk. Now it'll let you provide a driver from virtually any uh, location. And that way, perhaps you have a newer SCSI or SAS controller that Windows doesn't have built-in drivers for. My disk came up fine, so I can select it and choose to uh, use that entire disk to do my installation, which is what's typically recommended. Now, if you choose the drive options advanced, there is some options here to go ahead and create yourself new partitions on there. So you could actually logically partition that 72 gig I've got into uh, smaller partitions, but probably not something you really want to do. I recommend one volume, one disk volume, that you create so one drive letter you assign to your OS for every physical disk you have in your system. So if you're utilizing, uh, you know, one drive, one drive letter, two disks in the system, well, then I want to see two different drives. Unless I'm taking advantage of a RAID controller, at which point when I'm configuring my RAID controller, I'll logically build those as say a disk mirror where it's using both hard disks to control contain the same data at which point here it would show up exactly like this it would show up as one disk because my disk controller is taking care of all of that for me so we're going to go ahead and select this disk zero click next and it's going to begin the setup now what happens now well the system's going to chug away for a while it's going to copy the files expand the files install the features install updates and complete the installation and we're going to fast forward through that for you and when it's all done, we'll be up and running with our new server. And then we'll show you some of the things you can do uh, at post-installation. Okay, well that was most of setup. The only thing left to do is, because it didn't prompt us for a password, when you first log in, the first time you actually go to log into the system, it has you set the password then. So, we'll now set our password. Let's try admin pw. And we'll click Next. And it'll actually tell us that it's not complex enough because the first password, and actually by default, all passwords must be complex, having uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special characters. So having at least three of those four properties, plus being a length, and I think the length is either seven or eight. So we'll go ahead and give it admin PW and we'll put a exclamation one on the end. And let's see what that does. There we go. Change password. Our password has been changed. And we're now logged in. Well, that was per fairly straightforward for a setup. And you're exactly right. Setting up Windows Server 2008 is very easy. So, you know, if you remember in Chapter 1, we looked at basically what happened when we got a system that was up and running and giving us a start. And I figured now is a good time, now that we kind of understand how Windows Server 2008 works, to go back and see what a full setup looks like. And you'll find it's very straightforward. Once you're logged in for the first time, that's when the real setup of Windows th to Server 2008 begins. Because you see here we have the initial configuration task wizard runs and gets us all set up for uh, running this server.